And they would, they would come around, and you could, I mean, you really, you could smell them before they get into the sanctuary. Smoke and the, the stench and, and had a shower in a while. And they probably just coming out of a, off of a drunken spell, and they probably wasn't too uh, presentable, and they'd come in, and they would stay the whole service. But they would come in, and they would hear the gospel or hear the songs or whatever they would hear. They would come, and I, I can also remember, amen, when we used to have a feed here, amen, on Thursday. Sister Millie Ryan, thank God for her. She would invite them off the street to come and, and to eat, eat a hot meal. And, and we used to sing songs and, and witness to them. And we have others here today that are, that are inviting people in, amen, to partake, amen, of the goodness of the Lord. And I'm just telling, saying this, brothers and sisters, this is what the church is all about. Yes, this is what the church is all about. E.B. Hill, he's done on one of the greatest preachers America ever produced out in California. E.B. E. B. Hill used to go down and the, the, the drunks would get saved. Those were drug, drug addiction. He would, he would, they would get saved and he'd, he'd, he'd bring them into church and ordain them. He would ordain him. Why would he want to ordain somebody that hadn't had uh, seminary training and all that? You know why? Because they represented God first in the church and they could relate to other alcoholics. They could relate to other drug addicts. Amen. And many came to know Jesus Christ through their ministry. Brothers and sisters, there's more than just one way, amen, to win souls to Christ. We have to, amen, to use the pattern of Jesus Christ. He came, amen, he was anointed. God anointed him to reach out to the less fortunate. Peasy. Young man, young man in Philadelphia, up in Pennsylvania, he had, uh, matter of fact, they interviewed him, his church that he started. Started his church on Skid Row. He had more brethren in that church that you could shake a stick at. All of them, all of them were just hanging on the corners, drinking wine, wasting their lives. But he took an interest. He went down there and opened up the building right in the inner city. And he began to just feed them and give them a place to come where it's cold like a day like a day. He began to preach the gospel to them, Sister Lawana, and they would get saved. Had a church full of men. Can you imagine that? Church full of brothers. The love of the Lord with all their hearts. Oh, they would sing and they, they would uh, go to different places. They had a choir. I was down, I was called, amen, Brother Stanford, you know him. His church is down on P and uh, First and P or something down there. Very inner city, inner city church, amen. When I, uh, he asked me to go share with him. And, uh, and before I even got out of the car, there were just people walking around all over the place. There were stores on the corner and right down in the very inner city of, of Washington, D.C. and Amen. And he had, uh, amen, some of the people that came in to, to worship God. And, amen, and some of the people, amen, would come in and, and they would look in the door and they'd come and stay just a little while. And then they would leave. Amen. Reach it out to the lonely. Reaching out to the poor. Reaching out to the downtrodden where a lot of people have marked them off. Marked them off their list. Amen. They would not dare go into that situation. But I'm going to tell you, God has not marked them off. Amen. God has not marked them off. Oh God. Well, what are you doing, Pastor, preaching to the church like this today? I'm saying we need to wake up and know what our mission is. Where our mission is. Take advantage of every opportunity. Every opportunity to be a witness and to let our light shine. Not to be afraid. Not to be afraid. Amen. That's what God called us for. And I'm not saying that, listen, I'm not saying that we're looking down on those who do not look and act like us. But never let us get before the throne of God. Or let us be questioned by Almighty God 
and say, why could you didn't take advantage and open your doors to all people? You see, a lot of people, I'm not talking about giving money. You see, that's a cop out to some people. Well, I'll, I'll give, them, I give them a little money and then I don't have to be bothered with them. I'll let somebody else go. I'm not talking about that. Now, what about our children? What about our children? I'm going to tell you something. You may not like me after I say this. You know, we are incomparable around the poor and those that don't look like us. And those that pray to, you know, they may feel like it. You know, also we do this to our children. I tell you right now, we do everything we can to keep our children safe. And that's good. We do everything within our power to keep them from pain and suffering. And that's good. We do everything we can to ensure that they do not get hurt. That's good. But you want, if, you, if we want to be honest in the light of this passage that we read today, I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but I believe that oftentimes we shelter our children too much. I believe sometimes we spoil them. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, if you don't remember anything else, the world is going to hell fast. And we know the answer is Jesus. But I'm telling you, I'm asking God to let us, amen, our children, let us raise them to be godly. Hallelujah. Now, now, I believe that we need to expose our children and see the, for them to see the world for what is really going on in our world. Amen. I believe, amen, from time to time we need to talk to them about the shelter. Amen. Amen. I think from time to time we need to, amen, I remember Sister Vicki, she used to take the children down to the shelter and let them see the destitute and the hunger and the poor so they can see what this world is all about. Amen. To develop a compassion, amen, for this world, for the people of this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we want them to be godly. We want to train them right. Amen. We want to let them know that Jesus came and He's using you and I to preach the good news to the poor and to the prisoners, yes. to the blind, yes. and to the oppressed. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And then last, I'm coming to close, His person. In verses 20 21, Jesus had unrolled the scroll of the book of Isaiah and quoted Isaiah 60, 1 and 2. And He rolled up the scroll and He said, Today the Scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus had the boldness to say by the power of the Spirit, he said, I am the fulfillment of this Old Testament scripture. Jesus said, I am the Messiah. Amen. I am the Messiah. Amen. And the people just sit there and they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do. And so what to do, Satan got in their heart and they tried to destroy Jesus. They tried to kill him. They tried to kill him. Jesus is the fulfillment of scripture. Yes, and it's He that gives us the ability to reach out to the lost, the mean, the poor, the sick, the ugly, the stinky. Jesus Christ became human. He became human and He was tempted in every way we are but a man without sin. Despite His innocence, Jesus suffered a horrendous death on the cross for you and I. And we should not forget the person, the person of Jesus Christ. We should not forget the purpose of Jesus Christ. Let us stand together.